Hey guys, today's video is going to be going through a quick brief breakdown of how to figure out if you are farming the right area. Uh, a lot of people go out and we watch videos saying from so and so from Joe Blow content creators that are like, hey, this area gives you this much XP per hour. This is great. This is unbelievable. Everything else. Uh, there's a few metrics that go behind this that a lot of you guys aren't explained to and don't know about. And I want to kind of bring a little bit of that to light to you, to you guys so that way you know exactly what it is you're getting into and how to know what the best spots are in the game to farm and how you, you yourself as the viewer can actually do the math behind the scenes and figure it out for yourself without having to rely on us as a content creator. All right, so as you can see here, we have multiple packs of, of enemies right here. We're kind of kiting them around. One thing that I want to bring up and show you guys is that this is kind of like a spawn area, spawn point. What we want to do here is we want to actually start ahead and start our timer. Let's go ahead and kill these guys. And if you want to know if you have a really good spot that you're particularly farming and uh, you don't know if it's going to be good off the bat, one thing you can do is if you do where you kill them all, notice it took me about 10 seconds to kill them. I noticed the, the general cluster, right? The general cluster of the enemies is going to make a big difference for if you're trying to farm and level up quickly. Now, we are at about 21 seconds here, 10 seconds. Uh, one thing to note here is basically what we're trying to do is we're mapping out what the what the respawn rate is of the monsters in the area. Now, this will change. This will be variable depending on how many people you have in a party. If you have a group of four and they're all around you, uh, it seems as if they, they change this. So now notice that was about... We'll, we'll call that like 38 seconds and notice the mob density changed just a little bit and we were able to kill those guys here okay now now i know also notice there was someone else who's trying to farm this area so we know that the spawn rate is about 40 seconds per or so tops right so now let's take this and let's do some quick math on what we get for that area so now if we say we have 810 um experience points right 810 400 that's our current XP level. So now let's kill one mob when it respawns. And so right here, it went ahead and responded. So let's go ahead and let's kill this. And uh, okay, I got a piece of every one of them. So that means I got all the total points, even though someone else is farming that area. So now notice that we ended up with 113,000. So this is about 4K or so different, right? So if we go ahead and we subtract 813,000 from here, 964 you'll see that we got three three and a half k of experience for that one spot and that's per 40 seconds so that would essentially mean that this one location on this area can be broken down to one spawn point on this amount now this will change right because you saw how many monsters i had when i started notice i did not record the amount of experience that i had for that mob versus the one that i just had for a fresh spawn but you can kind of tell and pattern about what you get so let's see what we get on this one okay so what did we get there how much did we make there 817 that's about the same it's pretty close to the same uh if you rewind back you'll see that it's very close so this works out pretty well for you as far as an average guide will call it 3500 now this could be used to kind of come up with a plan on how often you should do this so let's go ahead and let's get out of this area really quickly and let's just go over here to where we need to be and when we'll pull up the handy dandy calculator and we'll do, do some uh, more quick math mathematics here so we guys have an understanding of whether or not you were farming in a correct area so we did we set an average of 3500 uh experience per pack that, that spawned this took us about 40 seconds on the refresh time minus the 10 seconds to kill them so about 30 seconds or so on the refresh 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 right so if actually that works out pretty well because it makes it really easy for us to do the math right uh so if it's a 30 second respawn point and so every minute that means you get two packs so every minute you're about 7k of the uh experience from that one pack area so what does this mean for you as a viewer who's watching this so that means you're about 7k ish we'll call it this is per minute now so this would tell you that the more xp that you want to get the more of those packs that you're going to want to spawn and you're going to want to time so if you're someone if you're interested in trying to find the perfect spawning and the perfect farming location uh, if you're willing to put in a little bit of time just by going picking a spot 
using like a tool like what I'm using for like live split so that way you can kind of split it and see exactly what you get for area. You can calculate pretty quickly if it's going to be a good area or a bad area. Other things to note is you need to figure out if in an area. So, for example, I was doing Plains of Torment as an example. This is a really well-known spot, uh, which is why I haven't done a video on it because it's really hard to farm it nowadays because everybody knows about it. Um, is you have a path. And so then you need to think, okay, well, how long would this subset path take? Would I be fully maximizing and utilizing my skills and abilities while they're respawning? So the next thing you need to do is come over here, pick another spot along a potential path that you want to plan out and do the same math. Eventually, what you want to try to land is that every second of the path, you have an ROI for your XP gained. That's what you're looking for. Uh, by having this math done, this will allow you to kind of calculate exactly what you can do. Because right now we are at 7,000 per minute. So if you stood on that one spot for one hour, that will give you... 427k experience points which is pretty decent because one bar is 3.5 million so really if we were to take 3.5 million and divide that by the 427 so let's do that so 3.5 million divided by the 427,000 what does this give us this means we need to find eight more locations in that route to give us one full bar of xp per hour now that's usually the metric we like to use on an average because one bar per hour or one level per hour seems about right. It's part of the course. That's what a lot of us go by. And that's without mixing in any bounties, any other challenges, any open world farming, any bestiary that you're turning in, right? This is just straight up. If you were to do nothing but just run this spot, you would need about eight of them total to farm that. Now, that also tells you the density that you're looking for when you're trying to pick a good spot to farm. So let's say, let's say you're just trying to open world farm and you're like, man, I don't know where I want to go. So you need to that allows you to kind of look at these maps and go okay well let's see here this is a good circular area maybe i can come over here and we can see if we have eight potential spots right here and then you come over here you run that same test simulation where you kill a mob you time it you see how what the respawn rate is you see what your xp gained per uh spawn grouping and that'll allow you to have a good idea now i do recommend that you do this on normal monsters not on blues and yellows because that is an actual ad additive equation which will change the actual amount of uh, xp that you're going to get right so you need to be conscientious of this when you're trying to move forward and building these uh let's call them experience gaining routes we'll call them um because you don't want to get hoodwinked by yourself by going oh man i did this test with the blue mob and it was this much xp it's just perfect well you're not always guaranteed to spawn the blue mobs uh, they do spawn, they, they spawn regularly. However, they're not guaranteed to spawn every time, all the time. So you wanna make sure you're conscientious of, okay, did I take the right choice and, and progress correctly with this on this certain path? Or should I go and move over to another area? Like for example, um, there's another spot in, um, not in Realm of Damnation, say, I think it's Biofin. Nope, nope, nope. Oh man, I'm, I'm busting here. Mount Xavian, that's what it is. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, and Mount Xavian, where there's a lot of these circular spots where you're like, oh, these would be perfect, blah, 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 blah. Well, when you look at the spawn rate, they're actually like 45 to 50 seconds. So to make a path over here work, you'd have to start here and work all the way around here to do this circle. And then you have to be guaranteed that no one else is taking your kills. And if you're going to run in a pack of four, it makes it even harder because then you've got a more, longer train and it makes it even harder to farm. This would be more of a solo type path. Uh, but that's something to be aware of because even though you have an area where you say say you time one spot like this that's just perfect doesn't mean the whole area is the same so you want to go out and you want to bet each individual path to really give you the best information and gather the best information for figuring out what actually gives you the most fluck for your buck and the amount of time and effort you're putting in because if you're going to open world farm and grind so that way you can get paragon levels then you need to be able to make sure that you're making conscientious choice of okay is this getting me the best experience per hour uh, which is why you see a lot of my videos that i have come out that talk about farming and open world i put it per hour because i feel like that's the best metric right uh, that gives you the the closest metric to what makes the most sense for your xp level i could tell you experience per minute and that number could sound great but then you go start doing it you start you start playing it and you get bored after 30 40 minutes you're like well what am i doing this for well if i tell you how much you get per hour that puts it a little bit more realistic in the grand scheme of things so that's why I do that, and I wanted you guys to make sure that you were aware of why I do that and how to kind of do the math yourself, so that way you're not relying on people like myself, Failed Shot, Chosen, any of those guys, and you guys can kind of learn and work together to figure out your own path. 
maybe as a war band, you want to guys that want to invest some time in farming all these locations and doing the same type of map. Maybe that's something that'll help with your camaraderie or a, a plan and an objective where you're like, oh yeah, I think this is kind of interesting. I want to go check it out. Or you have a spot and you're like, man, I think this is the best spot to farm. Well, by knowing this type of data, you can really quickly pick up and understand, okay, was this the best spot to farm or was it not the best spot to farm? The other thing to note too is depending on what Paragon tree you're running, that'll change greatly. So notice that I have Gladiator open for that test because I wanted directly to have Gladiator, not Treasure Hunter, because Treasure Hunter actually gives you another multiplier where you get the additional experience gain per kills right here, right? So that changes the whole metric to begin with. You wanna use a baseline so that we have a better understanding because you may have forgotten to activate Treasure Hunter and then you do it and you run it for an hour and you're like, man, I don't know what I did. At least this way that allows you to have an understanding of what you have without having to click and, and go into other Paragon Tree's skills to necessarily grab the, the metrics that you need, if that makes sense. Hopefully this helps you, hopefully this helps you understand a little bit better on how to find your own farming spot in, in the open world and teaches you a little bit on how us as content creators kind of figure this out for ourselves and then that's how we kind of base our entire experiments on on finding these perfect spots to show you guys hope you hope this helps you can't wait to see you guys in the next one have a good rest of your day peace